Hello there, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy and welcome back to another video. This is going to be quite a simple video. If you're new to fresco paints then this is a great place to start. Um, I'm going to use the lighter shades of paint and all of these have got one thing in common and that is that they're opaque. You can see it is indicated on the label if they're an opaque colour and also you have an idea of how opaque they are because there's a little paint swatch that we hand paint onto the labels and if you the chev, there's a sort of a black chevron underneath that and so you can see that the opacity of the paints might vary depending on how much of that chevron you can still see through the paint. So even though we call certain paints opaque, the, the, the actual coverage can vary from colour to colour. Right, so what we're going to do is, this is a really fun background and it doesn't use a lot of paint and you don't get really messy. So I'm just going to put these to one side and I'll start with any colour. You could do this with dark, you could do it with lights or mid-tone paints, it really doesn't matter. What it, but if you're going to stamp on top then I think it's quite good to start with the lighter colours. So all I do is start by putting the smallest spot possible onto uh, a piece of cut and dry foam. Now you're probably thinking, oh but she's got it upside down. I've deliberately put the paint onto the black side of the cut and dry foam because the paint doesn't sink into it. On the white side the paint sinks straight in but on the black side it doesn't. So it means that the paint gets transferred immediately onto the receiving surface and then you should have nothing much left on the piece of foam afterwards. So it's just a matter of putting it on there and then rubbing it in. Now I'm not trying to cover everything. I just want to cover a little bit at a time. So I'm just going to rotate my way through these paints, putting the smallest spot on there that I can. Tiny little spot. And then I just dab the spots on there and then immediately rub it in. And then go on to the next colour. small spot, dab, dab, rub it in. So as you rub it in, because these are opaque, they're going to cover over the top of the previous colour. So you get quite nice coverage and because the paints are so chalky, they're dry instantly. And because they're a nice dry paint to work with, this also means that you tend not to buckle the receiving surface. So you know sometimes when you wet a surface with paint and it starts to bend, that's just the moisture in the paint. But because our paints are a chalk finish um, and quite fast drying, that the paper doesn't really have a chance to buckle. Okay, so I'm just, can you see how it's starting to build up now, all these layers? Tiny spot, dab, dab, rub into a circular motion. This one's called Sage. Okay, then we're going to go back to the beginning. So we started with Lilac. Now the surface I'm working on is um, a piece of coated chipboard paper. It's coated with paper, but you can do this onto the back side of chipboard as well. So. Um, that's the uncoated side and then to show you the flip side that one's got paper on it so either side is good to work on if you don't if if you don't have white coated chipboard then just work on your normal gray board okay a bit more guacamole bosh it on there Mermaid. And you just keep rotating through until you like the background that you've made and the amount of colour that you've got on there. Now I try to use less and less paint each time because once you've got one layer of paint you don't seem to need as much, even, even though I've started with really tiny little spots in the first place. As you get a sort of one even layer on the surface, it, it just takes less and less to get the paint to go as the distance. And then as you sort of get to the point where you're kind of happy with it, then you decide which colours you use and you know you can either rotate through them randomly or if you deliberately want to get a little bit more blue on the top, then go back to the blue. 
it's one of those how long is a piece of string things. You can just keep going at this until, until you like it. Now, if you're planning on stamping on top of this, you might actually want to finish with a really light colour. So I've always, when I do this technique, I always use something like nougat, vanilla, cheesecake, one of those much lighter shades, or even snowflakes a good one, the white one. Oops, didn't really get that much at all. And the other thing, when I've taught this before, people tend to bend their piece of foam. You don't, you want to keep it flat. Just entirely have the whole surface flat so that it's coming into contact. I'm just going to go for one little bit more green. Right, and there you go. It's kind of a really simple, random painted background.